I got one more of these stories for you. I want to see how you guys think about this. You know, remember these are real, real world scenarios. All right, so it says, my stepson bought a home with his now ex-girlfriend. It doubled in value to 400K. She's willing to accept 50K. Should I intervene? They are now breaking up. It's a sad, messy situation, and his girlfriend's mental state is fragile. So her husband's son has been living with his girlfriend for 10 years. They bought a house with land in a very popular state about five years ago. Now they're breaking up, yada, yada, yada. I think she's hoping they will work things out and get back together. Her uh, doormat mantra is, I just want to make him happy. $50,000 does not seem kind or fair. I can't stand to see him take advantage of her. What would you say to her? What financial advice would you give? Or perhaps I'm the one who needs advice to butt out. So she's saying that she's not even taking her stepson's side. She's saying her stepson is robbing the chick because the chick obviously wants to get back together. So she's just telling him, just give me 50K. And he had a crib that's worth 400? Yeah. And she feels bad for the girl, even though it's her stepson. Should she mind her damn business? <laughs> Yo, man. I, I mean, unless she go, unless she gonna put her money up, like she need to mind her damn business. Like unless she gonna pay that four hundred. <laughs> yes, I sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, sis is definitely sunshine. The, she put that sunshine. Head. She put that sunshine on old here. But no, what do you think though? You think that she should? I'm um, listen. She should mind her business unless she, unless she got that four hundred k. To buy the crib outright, like unless she gonna buy it, she need mind her damn business. All right, so, so all right, let me go through these. Let me go through these comments. I want to ask Donna a question, especially when parents get remarried. Mind your business. Keep your lips sealed. So Don says, "Karma is real. Do right by people, and people will do right by you." So Don, let me ask you this question, Don: If that's your kid or stepkid, what do you do? Right? Do you say, "Look, you got to do the right thing and give her half"? Cause you know what the value is or what do you do? I mean, this is a real life situation. Yeah, like you got to put your money. Like if you're going to be giving advice, you got to be ready to put that money involved in it. These is adult people. Like everybody so you, in this situation. So that's the question. Involved. The question here is, do you let, do you let, you know, your, your, your kids, do you tell, do you tell them it's home? worth 400 K now, if you want to be, you know, you know, snitchy poo and say, all right, you know, you selling a, a four hundred thousand dollar house for forty for fifty k. You know what I mean? I all right, see, all right. So now we got some comments here, right? So I, I want to read these, right? So Chris says, "Will she do the same?" And I'm going to read Cookie's comment. She's naive. She needs to be educated. Do you take it upon yourself to educate someone who's not your, you know, the one that you are affiliated with? So here's Don. The guidance I'm giving is telling him to do the right thing, but he will do what he's going to do. Okay. So you tell him to do the right thing. You don't, you don't, you don't snitch on him, but you tell him like, yo, you can't do that. I respect that. Yeah, I mean, of course you want to, you, if, if you feel like he's taking advantage, that conversation needs to get had. But at the point after you had that conversation, either you got to put your money up or you got to wash your hands of it. Mm -hmm. I get that. All right. I'm not mad at that, Don. All right, Don, 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 uh, Don uh, broke it down, gave some context to what his comment was. I'm okay with that. Tell him like, yo, do the right thing, Spike Lee voice. But uh, but my thing is, what's the consequences if he don't? And see, that's that's the clear thing, like, because if he do it and then it ain't no consequences to it, then what's the reason for you to say it? Yeah. What's All right, here we go. If he don't. Ah, now Mecca getting to the meat of it. Let's get let's get more to it. The stepson and the young lady aren't married. She's not entitled to half the house. Or they spit in the mortgage 50 50. Didn't say that. It just said, yeah, just it said, no, it just said they bought it together. They bought it together. Oh, oh. I mean, if she's willing to sell it to him for 50 racks, like, why are you? Mecca, that's a good point, though, because now I'm going to say something else. If you are buying a house with someone, right, and you're not married, y'all have to have that kind of conversation way uh, before you buy right? You know, generally speaking, I haven't bought any a house with someone like, you know, I mean, real estate partnerships, but there's an operating agreement there. So I guess you got to have something similar to that. Like if you're not married and you're buying a house with somebody, like wh what is the plan? Should this not work? And that's the thing. Um, so we have an excellent episode um, of our podcast. Um, 
what's the what's the young lady's name, Cordy Attorney, that was telling us about um, Shabri. Shabri, Shabri Parker. That's who it was. It was Shabri. Shabri was talking to us about prenuptial agreements and how in our community we look at them the wrong way. And prenups are actually there to protect us on both sides. And we have to kind of like um, remarket how we look at prenups. Now, this they're not married, so there's no prenup, but there's paperwork that could have been done. Her point was when you go into any sort of situation buying a big purchase together, you got to have the hard conversations at that point. Like, yo, if this don't work, this is how we split this. We split this 50-50 or whatever it may be. Um, you know, but you got to have those conversations. Like, when things are good is the time I had a conversation, not when you're yeah, on the field of a bad breakup. Yeah. You say that now, Adrian. That's because you ain't met the right uh my right brother from right. Chicago. You ain't you ain't met you, you ain't yeah, you ain't you ain't met uh you know sugar papa yet. <laughs> Change your life, show you things, and you next thing you know, Adrian will be in here like I'm buying a house, y'all. But we talking grown people. I can't do anything. There is no consequence coming from me. I can only give guidance to grown folks, right? I'm giving guidance, and then if I ain't this got no true. money, I'm watching true. my game. But when they're your kids, you're going to give them guidance forever. Listen, yeah, when, you, when you're a parent, my question, right, because I well, got parents, kids. Right? Parents, the parents don't know how not to give guidance. Like, it could no, be so what I'm saying, what I'm saying to, what I'm saying is, right, I got a, my son 14, right? You know, whatever situations he's getting into, right? If I'm not, you know, I'm going to give guidance, but the, the thing about it is when me and my son had talks now, I always tell him the consequence of his actions. Mm -hmm. So You know what I mean? So let's say he's in this same situation and she's selling it for $50,000. I don't have all of the, the details about how it was bought and all of that stuff. But I'm like, yo, dog, like that house worth 400 k You know, you know, that's, that's, that's a raw deal for the young lady if y'all went 50-50 and everything was, you know what I mean, half season. Like yeah. you know, that ain't the right that ain't the right move. I think you should do better by her than that, right? Mm -hmm. I ain't going. You know, I'm not going to encourage him to to pillage the young lady and and, and and you know take that that large split. But um, on the other side, you know, I'm not telling her nothing because that's not my child. Like, no, I think I think I don't know who her folks kind of. I'm I mean, not, I don't know who her folks is, but I don't want to get involved in her family drama. If no, no, you know, I think once Don cleared up, that's exactly what Don was saying. That's exactly what Don was saying. He's not, yeah, he's saying the same thing. I'm just saying that to me, this is a conversation that you have to have going into it before it gets to this point. Um, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk to my seat and then I'm gonna let it go from where it is because then, because if it if it ride, I'm gonna ride with him. One second, because the one thing I do know about life is documentation beats conversation every single day of the week, which is why your point about Shabri was the was the, the, the correct point. Like you gotta have that conversation up front. Yeah. I will talk to her and him, and it's up to her to see if they can come with an agreement that they both can live with. You're a good person, Cookie. You are you a wonderful woman. Sugar Papa. <laughs> yeah, Corey definitely called him Sugar Papa. <laughs> right. I watched too much Judge Judy be buying assets with a boyfriend. <laughs> Can be, can be learned. She learned by other people's mistakes. She ain't had to make them. <laughs> oh man, listen. So that 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 I mean, listen. This is this is stuff that happens in real life. That's why I want to get you guys' perspective on it. Because again, as I say every week, um, a lot of finance situations just aren't cut. You know, they're not cut and dry. They're real life scenarios that people go through, and you have to figure out how to navigate that situation.